Hi everyone, Feet here. Today I'm recording a video so while it renders, I can multitask by cleaning up my room. In the video, I will show you my list of builds updated for 2022. It will include the ideas and reasons of different builds so you can create your own that best suits you and your playstyle. I may also talk about the weapons meta, what's good, what's bad, and uh, same thing with the perks as I go. Let's start by saying there are two main builds, Battleforge and Nimble. I don't do hybrids. For Battleforge, I go for Colossus, Steelbrow, and BF of course. Um, I play Battleforge, um, heavy armor, with bone platings or fur padding as attachments. For Nimble, depending on the builds, you either need only Colossus Nimble, or you will also need Dodge, Relentless, and oftentimes also Overwhelm. So it can be very perk hungry. I try to wear light armor um, and hyena cloaks for the dodgy build and bone platings for the non dodge build. So let's start with the 200 cleaver build. Um, Colossus Steel Brow Butterforge Package. Since this is a Butterforge build, of course, Colossus is just the best and easiest way to increase your tankiness and reduce injuries. Steel Brow prevents severe head injuries, which lead to death. And uh, there are two ways to die in this game. One is to get surrounded by multiple enemies and unable to get help, and it should be avoidable. Two is to get surprise smashed in the face uh, with a big weapon. You are left with half your HP and along with a severe injury, which further diminishes your capability to defend yourself, and thus you die. So Steel Brow prevents that. Um, we also have Underdog for most frontliner, because sur getting surrounded is one of the easiest way to die. So right, the 200 cleaver build. Probably the strongest build in the game, simply because this weapon, uh, quite literally one of, if not the best, it has high base damage, coupled with good armor damage and armor piercing. And it can hit twice. Um, so because of that, it's more flexible, it can move around more, and it can make use of Berserk Recover. Decapitate is amazing, makes it one of the best single target damage in the game. Um, the bleed is good, and you are guaranteed to get a free fame version from the Madman in the Icy Cave. Um, the Barbarian Cleaver has the extra 10% armor pen on top, so it's 35%. It's like a mini duelist perk. So, um, uh, and that makes it even deadlier. It can chop through even Orc Warriors. Um, and there's the Whip that has the highest range, and it can disarm. If someone is in danger, like they are like, Oh, please save me from the Orc Warlord. Please, Mr. Cleaverman, uh, you can just chop up the head of the orc next to you. You can walk two tiles toward the guy. You can quick hand into the whip and you can disarm. Bam, like how, how OP is that? Um, yeah, it, it can also bleed, you know. Did I talk about bleed? Um, the only thing that the cleaver likes is the AoE, but it more than makes up for it. And um, I give him the undead trophy so he can uh, whip geist. And you don't want your strongest guy to be, you know, harassed by, by resolve uh, attacks, right? So let's talk a little bit about Pathfinder. I like Pathfinder. I pick it on most Battleforge brows, um, damage dealer brows. But you can go for brawny or gifted if you want. Gifted if you want your brows to be just a bit stronger. You know, three more attack, three more defense is a lot, and a bit more HP and fatigue. Or brownie if you want them to be able to squeeze in one or two more attack before recovering. Mm, you just if you just want to up your fatigue pool a bit. But if you want to feel good, if you want to feel that you made the right choice when you fight in the swamp or the snow or the mountain or the forest, um, you will pick Pathfinder like I do. Even though gifted is probably better. So you can also try out the Cleaver Duelist build. It costs one more perk, so you might need to skip quick hands. Um, it's outshined by the 200 Cleaver though, but it can be good. And you can try out the Whip uh, Duelist 
in like while you're at it too. Next up is the Maze Duelist build. The Maze is not as crazy as the Cleaver, but the stun is always useful. It's so useful that I usually make my best starting bro into a stunner. Um, you can stun Red early on, you can stun Leader to puncture him, you can stun Reaver and, and Chosen who are extremely dangerous, and you can stun Heshna and Swordmaster and Gladiator in the arena. Like those high tier dangerous enemy that you might face. Not only that, um, the Maze do this has damage too. It can kill most things up to about um, 200 to 250 armor. More than that, it's not very good. But um, uh, it's not very good against Orc, right? Like Orc Warriors. Uh, so, and you can't stun Orc Warriors and Orc Berserkers. So consider switching to the big Maze maybe when you fight them. With Mushroom, the, the Maze do this can one shot on the guards. Uh, so can the 200 cleaver with the mushroom. So these two people can make quick work of the monolith and the library, which are one of the hardest ones in the game. Next one is the 200 hammer build. This guy's job is to guard the flank. Um, uh, this build doesn't have recover since the adrenaline in Dom nerve, and because he can't make use of berserk recover so much, I try to be more conservative with my stamina usage. He can maybe AoE and Berserk a few times, and once he's out of stamina, just one hit per turn is enough. And you can always drink the potion, the fatigue potion when you need to. The two hand hammer is a, it's not the strongest weapon. It's pretty good though, it's, but it's not the strongest weapon. But it's here to do what the mace and the cleaver can't. It offers you AoE, it offers you armor damage against things like Orc Warrior and maybe Armor Unhold, things like that. And it can disable enemies who are immune to stun by staggering them. Staggering is almost like a stun on the stun immune enemies, allowing you to kill them before they move. I gave him quick hand for added versatility, so he can use a pole hammer or any pole weapon of your choice. So he can um, extend his range a little bit and hit enemies from two tiles away. So I usually use this guy on the left flank, so he can AoE without hitting your own brothers. And the flank is the most pressured part of your team, and this guy will have to withstand it. I try to make him out of the highest quality recruit I can find. Because of that, um, he needs high attack and high defense, and he needs a good amount of stamina too. I also give him the Orc Trophy to tank the Orc Young Stunts, and give him the Ishrock Armor just to help him out. A little bit more. Um, compared to the maze build, he needs more stamina. Compared to the cleaver build, he needs more defense. The cleaver can afford to have a bit lower defense because if things go wrong or if he doesn't feel comfortable jumping at enemies, he can always stay back with a whip, right? So between these three builds here, you should have a good array of damage to deal with most things already. And the next build is the Battleforge tank. This one is for the late game when you are often outnumbered. Um, he will try to balance the skill by pinning down multiple enemies so your team can have an easier time with the rest. Um, so for this guy, I try to maximize his tankinage by giving him all the defensive perks. Um, Colossus, Steel Bra, Butterfrost, of course. I also go for more resolve with Fortified Mine. Shield Mastery, Indomitable mainly to deal with Armor Unhold, that's try to bulldoze through your formation. And Lone Wolf is mainly here for the Monolith fight. This guy's job is to run out there, pin down the most dangerous enemies, pin down as many as you can, and just sit there and survive. Next one is the No Fatigue Butterforce build. This build is very interesting because it's here to make use of Swordmaster. Swordmaster are squishy with low fatigue and HP, but they have extremely high attack and defense. 10 more than your normal H9 and Cell Swords. With this build, we can have a guy uh, with the accuracy and the defense of a Swordmaster, uh, along with the tankiness of a Butterforce Brother. We do have to sacrifice DPS. He can only hit once per turn without Berserk. But when he hits, he will connect. Um, this build is very powerful early on, but will fall off late game. 
um, because there are so many enemies and hitting only once per turn may not be enough. I go for the big axe here for damage, but you can go for a big mace or the big hammer or the great sword or the big flame you want. Alright, next is the lightning sword build. This build is here just to make use of this weapon since it's too good. Uh, way too good. It destroys goblins and ancient undead since they have low HP. 3 or 4 zaps will kill them without you even touching them at all. This build is here to make use of bros with really high attack but lacks some defense. It requires less defense than the cleaver build because you can use a shield and it requires less stamina because the sword is lighter under fatigue. You can cut Killing Frenzy because the Killing Frenzy does not affect the lightning damage from the sword which uh, is the main reason why you are using it. You can put it into Resilient if you want to solo Goblin Camps. Just give him a Goblin Trophy. Okay, next one we have the Battleforge War Scythe. This builds here to make use of bros with unfixable defense but has high attack. Maybe a Cell Sword with huge and, and cocky or something like that. Um, I like to keep him on the left side of the flank, just behind the hammer guy, so the hammer can AoE and strip the armor, and this guy can get in with the reap. Um, the damage from the war scythe is not very impressive, even with a frame version, especially against armor, but it does excel against goblin. Battleforge allows you to walk up to the goblins, uh, struck off the arrows, and slice them up, behind their palisades, potentially killing 6 per turn. And since he's still a battle force brother, with a little bit of defense, he can assist the hammer guy with guarding the flank. I give him quick hands and a big maze in case he has to get up close and personal with something harassing your flank. The next build is the battle force maze katar. The katar dagger is a overpowered weapon. Triple death blow can rival decapitate damage from cleaver. The build allows you to deal massive damage with the big mice and swap to the dagger and squeeze in a death blow. And next turn if they are moving slow from the dice, you can death blow even more. The build has very high single target damage and the mice can destroy enough armor so you can make do without duelist. Um, I personally don't use this build a lot since if I want single target damage, I would go for the cleaver build instead. But if I find an amazing two hand maze early on, I will consider making this. Though I don't think this is the best way to use a dagger, but this build it has Butterforge, so it's tanky. It has the maze that can daze and destroy armor, which enable other Qatar dagger brothers. It has quick hand with a build hook for extreme versatility. Um, it's not a bad build, but it's not the best in my opinion. So, and the last Butterforge build is uh, the Unicorn Spear Duelist build. Again, this is not the greatest build ever, but it has a place in the game. It has very low requirements, it's good against zombies and small beasts, uh, and against orc and chosen, it can really mess with the AI. They have no range, and they have no way to break through the spear wall, so they either have to jump into it, or they will have to find another way, which waste their time and bite your team more turn. Um, one guy here can guard an entire flank or funnel enemies into your choke point and you can grind them up. And I have duelist and fearsome here to try and get that one damage through and try to break enemy. Uh, by the way, let's talk about the stat requirements here. ATHP is usually enough for a battle force rather after Colossus. Um, the fatigue here is what I try to get without any equipments. 50 resolve is usually the baseline for most of my frontline brothers. And if you see the zero here, that means you don't need any of those stats. And two stars means that the stat is quite important to the build. One stars means you can get away with a bit lower, but you still need it. Three stars means that the stat is extremely important to the build. And zero star means that you just try to reach the requirement by pumping in a few high roll here and there. And that's it for the Battleforge section. Let's move on to the Nimble builds. First off, we have the Dagger Duelist. This build is all about the Qatar Dagger. It is overpowered. Triple Death Blow deals an absurd amount of damage, but stabbing casually three times is surprisingly strong. Since the Dagger, since the dagger doesn't consume that much stamina, 
I skip recover. The idea of the build is to overwhelm enemies while doing good amount of damage. Uh, 1v1, this guy is unkillable because of triple overwhelm. And you can get that as soon as level 6. So he enables so many fights early on uh, against, say, Unholz, against Ifrits, and any dangerous enemies. You overwhelm them three times, they are no longer a threat. And early on, uh, you don't need to invest in the Qatar Dagger, you can just use this casual Dagger to overwhelm, and also he helps with puncturing enemies to get armor early on. Uh, later on, the damage from the Qatar Duel list is just the cherry on top. So for the dodgy overwhelm build, you will need to spread point between HP, um, initiative, attack, and defense. But for this guy, the requirement is very low. You don't need that much attack because you're attacking three times. If you miss once or twice, it's still okay. And you still overwhelm them anyway. And you don't need that much defense because you have the dodge to help you out. And you don't need that much int for this guy because you only need enough to move before your intended targets. Uh, 130 int after armor is usually good enough to move before most dangerous things. I make the bear gladiator into a dagger duelist and I've got to say that it's the best build that I have tried on him even though he has no star in the relevant stats for the build. So basically any cell sword, noble, gladiator, assassins, even with no star can be a dagger duelist just fine. And I think this is one of the best builds in the game considering how low requirement and useful it is in relation to how strong it is. But wait, there's more. Since you have enough initiative to move faster than most enemies, you basically have permanent adrenaline and you are virtually immune to stun and sand and any effect that lasts only one turn. Things like stun will go away at the end of the turn. So if you move first and use up all your actions, but wait turn instead of ending your turn, if you get stunned after, at the end of the turn, it will go away, and next turn you will still move first, like nothing happened. You are immune to orc stuns, nomad sand, priest horrified, and any fight that would last two turns will only last one turn on you. The decker does like AoE and armor damage, but we can fix one of that problem in the next build. Behold, the Qatar decker maze build. I basically just slap quick hand on here, and I. And I skipped all this because um, the maze could, got enough armor damage so I can get through without the duelist. I feel like um, with quick hands you can fix your armor problem on most people just by equipping a big maze or a great axe. Um, yeah, so with this build right, you, you can smash them with a the maze, daze them, death blow them with a the katar dagger and because you are moving fast, you can get in three more death blow. Next turn, uh, somewhat similar to the Battleforge one, but you are faster and you have Overwhelm. Uh, if you run out of stamina, you will have to be content with just smacking with the maze one per, once per turn, or stabbing them three times with the dagger and overwhelming them, which is not too shabby. Also, some enemy resist thrusting damage from the dagger and the spear, so against things like Ancient Dead or Ifrit, consider bringing the big maze uh, for your dagger duelist or maybe your spear duelist. Or just bring a small maze and make them into a maze to list in those fights instead. Hey, next build is the Fencer build. One of the most powerful and fun builds in the game. This build is all about damage and mobility. It requires an extreme amount of stats. You need HP, you need fatigue, you need enough resolve, you need initiative as much as you can get, you need max out melee skill, and you need a good amount of defense. So you will almost never find the perfect role for this build, but if you get him close enough, the Fencer is awesome. So this build is basically a nimble, dodgy sword duelist. I go for Overwhelm instead of Underdog because I think the Fencer prefers to engage only one or two enemies at a time. He does not want to tank more than that at once. Because you have to spread your stats so thin, you need as much attack you can get because if you Fencer something and you miss, you're in trouble. You need, you also need as much int as you can because the damage from the sword comes from initiative. You need a good amount of HP. I prefer 80 with Colossus, but oftentimes I can only get to 70. You also need a lot of stamina because fencing is very fatigue intensive. That means you're gonna have to sacrifice a little bit of your defense. So, so low HP, not the most amount of defense. 
you don't want to get into situation where you need underdog in the first place. Not having underdog constantly remind me to play him in a safer way. When you are lunging around and there's two tiles between you and the enemies, he will often go to the right side. And I put him on the right flank so he will try to go toward the sides more instead of going toward the middle and into the enemies. His job is to stop and eliminate the flanking enemies, so Overwhelm allows me to be more confident jumping at a Chosen or a Rock Berserker, trying to flank my team, and uh, ideally we try to kill them before they get attacked, but if they survive or even if I miss, uh, the Overwhelm protects me better than the Underdog. And when he's done with the flank, you choose the moment to jump in and skewer the squishy backline of the enemies. I give him the Goblin Trophy so he can't be net down or root down. That can be very dangerous to him. And with this he can jump at the Goblins completely destroy them. Next one is the Nimble Tank. Um, it's an early tank build. Incredibly survivable early on. It's also very low requirement. Almost any thief can become one. It's basically the Dagger build but more defensive. You still have Overwhelm and you have an incredible amount of defense from your own defense, from the shield, and from the dodge. This guy enables really hard fights early on, especially against Leaning Worm. Nothing can tank the Leaning Worms in the early game except for these guys. In other casual fights, he's just a unkillable guy uh, that can help out with Overwhelm and sometimes can help puncture enemies. Alright, the next few builds aren't very special so I will go through them quicker. We have the Thrower Archer. Uh, it's the best range build it has high DPS from long range from the bow, high armor piercing from close range with the javelins. Um, for this build, bullseye is optional, you can go maybe gifted um, colossus, bag and belts. I go for the footwork recover to just make sure that they can get away when they need to and stay safe. The build is very easy to make, you just need to find a 2 star hunter. 1 star is okay too if he rolls well, you don't need any other thing. Uh, you just need to patch up some HP, some fatigue and some range defense as you go. Next up is the crossbow polearm build. This build is just inferior to the throw archer in almost every way. If the throw archer is iron man, then the crossbow polearm is war machine. If the throw archer is the chat captain of the football team big brother, then the crossbow polearm is the video games playing nerds emo little brother. The only thing that the build has going for itself is that it's even lower requirements. It's here for the people who fail to meet the archer requirement. You only need 80 range skill to use the crossbow effectively. The crossbow plan is decent in the early game, it's really good against raiders and nomad, and uh, especially goblins. Sometimes early on you just need to have a few range units in there so you can counter the brigand marksman. Next is the bannerman. The banner doesn't do anything, but you still need one in the team, just like a manager. So the question for the banner build is always how do I make him more useful? So I give him a bit more defense and rotate people around when they need help. Since I don't have rotation on most of my brothers. I also put Fearsome in there since he have a lot of resolve. Though Fearsome is better on multiple people, not on a guy who can only attack once per turn. But um, if it can help out somewhat sometimes, I'm happy. The build is very flexible, I give him quick hands so he can throw nets and bomb. But you can incorporate whatever you want, maybe you can try a whip, maybe some throwing weapon. And this is my attempt to let him hop out with the range. More range is always better as long as it doesn't compromise your formation. You don't really need that much resolve on a banner. So early on if I find something with some resolve and enough range skill, I make them into a crossbow banner so we can hop out early game against raiders and marksmen and stuff. Alright, last are the playable builds. Um, these are early game builds designed to make your mediocre bros as useful as fast as possible. They will help out your core team as much as they can and they can die when they need to. Uh, they are the employee of the month right here and they tend to not survive much longer than that. I usually go for Colossus gifted backstabber into Maze Mastery so at level 5 I have a really good stunner against Raider and even Brigand Leader. At level 6 I go back for recover so I can make sure I keep some enemies done locked for a long time and at 7 I go for nimble. After that you can go for fast adaptation to help stun even stronger enemies, rotation to save life, shield mastery to be tankier and underdog. 
This guy's job is to engage the most dangerous enemy out there, try to stun lock them, and buy time for the team. The Pleb Spear build is a bit different. It's here because I find that having a dedicated spearman early on can be very helpful. It's good against zombies and small boys who are just mindlessly jumping at the spear wall, and it can mess with the orc and chosen AI, make them waste their time, and it can solo the madman just by spear walling by the way. Alright, that's it for the list. A few weapons and perks are not shown here. One is the flail. The flail is good for headshotting raiders early on to get their armor, but I'm not going to make a dedicated guy for that. Uh, I can just casually equip the flail and headshot them just fine. And I have the dagger build to help puncturing too. Two is axe mastery. The great axe is excellent at dealing damage, but it's more like punching your way through a problem, um, and it's not my style. When you really need damage or need to crack shield against Shroud, for example, you can just equip this casually on people. The one hand axe is not very strong. Cracking shield is a waste of time in most cases. It also doesn't offer any utility like the stun or the disarm from the whip. I also don't use a lot of guns. They are too clunky for my taste. They pair well with the pole arm, so you can try the gun out on the crossbow pole arm build. And apart from the facing sword, the great sword doesn't do enough. And the one hand sword sucks. Um, and for the perks, since Adrenaline and Indown got nerfed, I don't use them anymore. Adrenaline can still be pretty fun, but the dodgy nimble build kind of have a permanent Adrenaline already. Uh, Crippling Strike is probably the worst perk in the game. Um, Executioner and Headhunter aren't reliable enough for a damage perk. I prefer to have more survivability or utility from other perks. So that's guys, are my most standard builds. I try to change things around uh, depending on the bros and the situations. These are just the most vanilla builds. They're not very spicy, but they work. Right, I hope this video helps you. If you have any questions or some spicy builds that you want me to check out, post it below uh, or in the Discord channel. Links to everything down below. Thank you so much for watching. Pity out. See ya.